Robert Rodney once said in a famous quote, I'm not sure if any of you heard, heard this quote before, man's reach exceeds his grasp. One of the things when this quote, um, when I hear this quote is often, is often that we have, sometimes we're able to reach for things, but we don't completely have, a, we don't exactly master whatever we're reaching for. If you visualize it, it kind of makes sense. You would want to reach for something, but you quite can't exactly grasp it. But it doesn't mean that sometimes it'll, it'll benefit us. We can either push it more, for, more farther away from us or just top it over. One of the things that comes to mind is, um, that affects us all, is in the field of selective breeding and eugenics in animals. Some of you are thinking, what would I care, you know, about animals. This actually affects us uh, very deeply. Um, one of the things that um, um, comes to mind is that the animals that we come in contact with, you know, our pets, uh, the food we eat, and even things, even some small animals that we don't take account for. Um, the field of eugenics and selective breeding has actually been around quite a bit, as long as our history um, can show us. Um, some count, some historians and biologists consider the domestication of animals to be around 9,000 BC. Um, I beg to differ, simply because the Neolithic Revolution happened around 10,000 BC, and if you don't count plants as domestication, then, you know. But plants were domesticated at 10,000 BC. Earliest animals that were domesticated around that time are sheep and dogs. And, uh, you know, dogs have been around since that long, and, you know, who's man's best friend than dogs, you know? Uh, many of you, if, if some, for some of you dog owners, you know, the dogs are awesome. They're man's best friend, not cats. <laughs> Uh, if you come home, you know, they're, they're bred to love you, protect you, care for you. Um, if you come, you come home, they, without a doubt, they'll always greet you at the door. Um, however, people have been breeding dogs for certain traits. Um, yeah, it benefits us, but sometimes we don't quite grasp what people are doing when we breed dogs. For instance, there's some certain breeds of dogs that have Traits that aren't exactly best for them, but just because we think they're cute, we still do it. Um, pugs come to mind, and bulldogs, because of their nasal cavities, they often have a hard time breathing. Um, this comes to also in mind uh, purebred dogs. Um, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of breeds of dogs out there. Uh, some breeds, such as Labradors, you know, there's so many breeds of dogs, it's ridiculous, and we're still making breeds. Um, however, when it comes to purebred dogs, there's often, there's um, potential side effects of this. Um, National Geographic in 2007 released a documentary on the science of dogs, and the downside of pure breeding dogs is that one in every four purebred dogs often suffers from a general uh, genetic disorder or disease. These diseases can range from blindness, deafness, epilepsy, uh, epilepsy um, and hip displacement, you know, that's pretty sad for, you know, man's best friend to have, often have this. Um, the problem often results from purebred dogs is, is that we often limit their gene pool. Uh, for those that don't know, gene pool is the diversity of our genes. Humans don't normally have a very diverse gene pool. We're not limited to who we, who we, you know, get together with or appropriate with, but animals, since we're artificially selecting them who to breed with, we're limiting their gene pool and often certain problems like these arise. Um, scientists actually have been trying to fix certain of these diseases, but it's not really solving the problem. It's only, like, as one said, put a band-aid on it. It doesn't exactly remedy it. Uh, another uh, example I want to bring out is that why um, domestication um, is a, the big thing in genetics is uh, there's a study conducted by a Russian scientist. It actually started in 1959, um, and he was actually yeah, he was a pioneer in genetics at the time where uh, Soviet Russia actually um, put a it, uh, genetics in Soviet Russia was actually a very frowned upon um, topic. Um, he was actually brave enough to conduct this this. Um, 
experiment despite his brother being executed and sent to a uh, prison camp. So what he did is he proved that domestication in animals actually affects their genetic makeup. And he tried it with foxes. And this report was actually published in 2011. Um, he noted that he was able to prove that over several generations of foxes that he was able to successfully domesticate certain genetic traits and physical traits appeared, such as uh, spots on their coat, uh, floppy ears, and a different curve on the tail that normally foxes don't show up with. So his experiment proves that domestication of animals can actually have an effect on their genetic makeup, and it's not rather na nurture, but nature. Uh, another uh, example I want to bring out too that um, eugenics and animal selective breeding is a potential problem is on the current population of bees. I'm not sure if you've heard in the news, but more and more uh, honeybees are actually disappearing and dying off. And we've actually had in some cases have to import bees from other states to our state because so many of our honeybee hives just completely just disappeared. Um, there's actually only currently two breeds of honeybees in the United States that were brought in from the early 19th, uh, 19th century. Um, however, um, a geneticist, a beekeeper um, named by the, she is actually um, from UC Davis, forgot her name. <laughs> um, she uh, stated in a report that unless we diversify the gene pool of these honeybees, we'll be suffering more problems with them in the future, where to the point where there actually there won't be any more honeybees. Uh, the problem that actually aggravated this problem is um, in 1922, there was a ban on all honeybees imported in the US, so currently we only have two, although there's up to 16 breeds in, in uh, Europe alone. Um, and lastly, my other example that I want to bring up is um, the, it's it's um, another animal that we don't normally particularly think about is fish. Um, I'm a, I have a, a, a aquarium. It's one of my hobbies that I have. Unfortunately, um, the fish are coming to start. They're not really considered fish now. They're more meant to quote unquote unquote ornamental fish. Uh, one of the f problems when you mass breed some of these fish though is sometimes these breeders don't exactly take into account what kind of breeding methods they produce. Uh, one example of a fish that I kept and had to deal with uh, a disease is a uh, uh, dwarf gourami. Uh, because they're so massively produced and they only care about coloration, they're frequently inbred. And one of the things that this inbreeding has produced is a disease called uh, dwarf gourami derital virus, which causes the fish to swell up. It normally just stays on the floor. It doesn't really eat. It has a hard time breathing. And it stays like this for a very long time, and then it just dies because mm -hmm. it fails to be able to breathe efficiently. There's no cure for it, and it can affect up to 30 species of fish, and even more, particularly because they don't know how, um, how many fish can contract the disease and be carriers of it. Uh, according to a report by the Commonwealth of Australia, they've actually been trying to figure out a way to control the disease and have the government of Singapore stop its breeding processes because they try, they're starting to notice it's becoming a problem that they don't exactly think it's serious. And um, hopefully with these examples, I've uh, enlightened you to see that selective breeding and eugenics is a problem in our today's society. If mankind can't fully grasp this new um, field of genetics that we've just started recently learning in this 20th century, then mankind is destined to set the road for disaster. If people are aware, are, are very self-conscious of organic food, why can't we be self-conscious and be responsible in the way we breed animals?
Kimberly, what did you think? Um, first of all, I didn't notice uh, <coughs> that opening statement or a greeting or um, any introduction of the beginning. The examples that he gave, it kind of made it seem like he was jumping around, which caused a distraction of focus in the speech. And I did notice that he was walking <coughs> around in different sections of, in front, and I think that was kind of distracting. I didn't see any like meaningful purpose in walking around the room. Uh, there were some situations where I thought he kind of was um, like improvising some of the material, like getting confused. But overall, I think he had great enthusiasm. He spoke loudly, had really great projection, and I think he did a good job. Okay. Yeah, the quote I think needs to be a little bit tighter and you need to have it practiced out a little bit more. It, it feels like you are uh, improvising here, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but when you try and make the transition to the topic, it wasn't very clear how you were getting together with those points. And it, that ought to be something that flows pretty smoothly. Uh, we get a history of animal breeding, and then you're arguing about whether it was 10,000 or 9,000 years ago. I have no idea why that matters and why you're spending time on that. It, it just seems like it's um, unnecessary and disconnected from what you're talking about. You need to preview and structure the, the material here. You've got a lot of examples and incidents, but it doesn't seem like it's building to a particular point. They just seem like another example that you're talking about. So it's almost like an informative speech where you're going to talk about uh, some of the problems that occur because of breeding. I'm going to talk to you, to you about breeding of dogs. I'm going to talk to you about breeding of foxes. I'm going to talk to you about breeding of fish. And people are going to go, okay, well, that and honeybees too. You know, that sounds interesting, but what is the overall issue that we're getting to? I think at the end of the speech, you've got a much clearer statement of what your speech is supposed to be about than you had at the beginning of the speech. I like the exit lines that you have there. I think they work really well. I just wish that it had been that coherent at the beginning of the speech so it makes everything fit together a little bit more. <coughs> and then when you're talking about your examples, you need to talk about what it is that the examples demonstrate for us, that we are... <coughs> focusing on a short-term gain as opposed to the long-term health of the animal. That there could be unseen consequences to the breeding processes that we're using that could be uh, particularly devastating. That we ought to reconsider some of our practices and especially laws or rules that might be creating these kinds of problems. Now that, I think that's the way it ought to be structured as opposed to going by the examples that you come up with. Um, you did cite uh, information pretty regularly. You had a couple of uh, pieces of information that were statistical in nature. When you're telling us, for instance, the one story about the guy um, who domesticated the foxes, though, you're giving us way more context on this than I think is necessary. First of all, it's published in 2011. Why we're getting a reference to how the old Soviet Union felt about this kind of research in 1959, I don't know. And, uh, you know, the story about his brother being uh, executed, I don't even know why his brother it turned out to be executed. Did it have something to do with the kind of research that was going on? And what was so darn controversial about this? So you domesticate foxes, they breed in domestication, and they develop certain characteristics as a result of this breeding. Is that really a surprise? I, I didn't know that that was something that people didn't understand. I thought that fit in exactly with what the whole process was from 9,000 or 10,000 years ago, depending upon you know, which way we're looking at it. So I, I didn't understand what that point gets you. It's, it's a, it feels like it's a random piece of information. <coughs> the arguments that you seem to be making is that when it comes to dog breeding, we get side effects that are hurtful to man's best friend. When it comes to uh, the bees, for instance, uh, we, we've been so selective about the bees that we've allowed to be here that as a consequence, uh, the hives are on the verge of collapse and we may have uh, big problems with the, the honeybee um, environment and of course industry and all the things that the honeybees also do in addition to providing us with honey, for instance, uh, you know, <coughs> pollinating all kinds of um, flora and fauna that are important for our ability to survive. Uh, the fish argument is another one that's kind of like, okay, well, I know this is going on. From 
if I was a fish breeder and I knew that I was breeding fish that have this particular problem, <coughs> and I, it seems like it wouldn't take long for customers to figure out and do some reading and discover that this is a problem, you'd think they wouldn't buy those particular kinds of fish and there wouldn't be any demand for it. It seems strange to me, though, that then they developed this disease. Can you catch a genetic trait? That's what wasn't clear. Did, is it because they have the genetic trait that they're susceptible to particular kinds of diseases, and then those diseases get spread to other fish? I wasn't quite clear as to how that all fit together there. And what it is that Singapore is doing that is problematic is, you know, like I said, it feels like it's a random piece of information. I think there's a speech in here. I think it needs to be beaten into shape. You know, you need to take it out into the alley and, uh, you know, cut some of it, uh, pound some of it, and uh, force some of it to do things that it doesn't want to do. That doesn't sound like a good date. <laughs> All right.